In this video, I'm going to show you why companies love to build their data science platforms on top of Apache Kafka and Apache Spark, because this is the reason you should get into Spark and Kafka. If you're new here, my name is Andreas. I'm a data engineer and data science platform architect. My passion is to bring you the best tips and tools for building your career and your reputation by becoming an awesome data engineer. On this channel, I do a lot of strategy videos and Q&A sessions as well as tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Do not miss any updates. So in this video, I'm going to show you why companies love Kafka and Spark and why most data science platforms are using it. And one of the reasons is um, parallel processing and distributed processing so that you don't have any bottlenecks in your system and you can um, very efficiently process data if it's uh, stream processing or batch processing. If you look at um, data science platforms, one thing that uh, most of them have in, or all of them have in common is uh, it starts with some kind of ingest. Um, ingest where your data comes from the internet, let's say from an API. And then after that, it goes into some kind of a processing where uh, Kafka and Spark are living. Kafka, a message queue and Spark for the actual processing of the data. Then after the processing, it goes somewhere in a storage this is mostly in data science platforms, some kind of a distributed storage. If you're on a Hadoop platform, um, it goes, for instance, into HDFS, or it can go into a NoSQL uh, database, like, for instance, HBase. HBase is, if you're already on, on a Hadoop platform, it's more or less built in, so than this. It's very easy to use. And then from this on, it's going to be um, going in the direction of visualization. And for visualization, you can have a user interface, a web interface, or for instance, um, what many people are also using are BI tools um, like Tableau or like Power BI. Okay, the main thing here is, is to have this, this whole process as efficient as possible. So you don't have any bottlenecks and everything works in parallel. And how do you do that? What you what companies are doing is they use a, a platform with distributed processing. Let's say you have an API at the ingest uh, phase. You have an API. This API, let's say it's a REST API. This REST API runs on top of a server. And what you can have, you can have, um, if you have uh, in front of those servers a load balancer, you can have multiple servers here. And you, you can then distribute the load from the load balancer onto those servers. So this is the first stage distributed. Next stage is going to be into some kind of a message queue. So you don't get into the situation where you where you're getting back pressure. That means you are um, you're getting a lot of data from the API, and it cannot get processed as fast as as needed. So with Kafka in the processing, so, so this is the ingest with Kafka in the processing. Um, in the in the previous tutorial, I've talked about um, topics and so on. Um, with Kafka, Kafka is also a distributed system. So you have a topic has multiple partitions and the partitions are then distributed um, on top of the servers or on multiple servers. So you have multiple servers at Kafka and it's also distributed. So if you post from an API into Kafka, this all goes parallel. So then, then the next stage is the actual processing of the data. The actual processing, you do this, for instance, with Spark. 
and Spark also Spark in memory processing um, system for batch and for stream processing. So if you're doing stream processing in, th in this in this example, um, Spark is, is a distributed system. You have multiple servers running on Spark. And if you're uh, getting data from, uh, from Kafka, this means you're starting a, a direct stream from Kafka and then this is also parallel. So this goes here. Each server from Kafka is posting in, in parallel into Spark workers. So then you're in parallel. You don't have any bottlenecks here. The next phase would be store the data. Store the data. You do, let's say, HDFS. Store data from Spark into HDFS. HDFS is Hadoop um, distributed file system. This means uh, you have multiple servers again and you're running the storage on top of the servers. I think you can see a pattern emerging here. So this also goes from Spark in parallel to HDFS. What you mostly, what you also do in in uh, in Hadoop environments is you're running the Spark workers on top of the data nodes from HDFS. So it's even faster because you don't have uh, you don't have that much of a travel, or or, or uh, you don't need to send as much data to sp uh, to HDFS on, or to Spark. And then uh, the data is stored, the data can be processed. If you then go and say, okay, um, I'm going to do a batch processing, then what happens is then those two are also going to, uh, going to matter. And Spark is going to load the data in parallel from HDFS, which is stored in parallel, and you have the full potential of the whole platform. And so, yeah, this is how it works. And then let's say you have on top of HDFS, you, you can, for instance, then have here a Hive um, server or a, uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, keep it simple with Hive. And then you have a visualization with a SQL uh, interface with Tableau. Either with Tableau, or you can, you could, um, you could access it from a U UI, or you could write this um, out from Spark into um, into HBase, and then have it uh, accessed from a UI. Oh, okay, but yeah. So this is this is the idea that you are the the processing is completely in parallel. Everything is in parallel, and. It's very efficient, it's very fast. And this is why people are going to use Kafka and Spark a lot because it's it's super scalable, it's super efficient, it's very practical. Also, if you're doing uh, if you're doing streaming, um, the it's it's not that the only way here is to go from Kafka into Spark and then uh, further into a storage solution. What you can also do is you can go out from a spark and you can again put it into a Kafka topic so you can you can uh, chain all those things together and yeah and have a a, a super super uh, large uh, pipeline you could can do this multiple times and and refine your data even more yeah so this is the reason a lot of people are using Kafka and Spark. It's 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 very very versatile and very very performance oriented for distributed systems. Okay, so that's it for the reasons you have to learn Kafka and Spark. Tomorrow is going to be part 2 of the tutorial. It's how you install a dev environment for Spark. This is going to be a lot different than uh, many other tutorials you are seeing. We're not going to use the Spark console. We're not going to go into um, coding with, uh, with, uh, with dev environments, with IDEs. We are going to do this with um, Apache Zeppelin. Something very different and something very cool because uh, I use this to to learn Spark myself, and I'm 
I'm giving a lot of people the advice to do this as well and it's working. If you want to learn more about the uh, data platform I just told you like with ingest, uh, process store and visualize you can go to my Patreon um, patreon.com slash plumbers of DS and from there you have a you have a link to a preview version of my data engineering cookbook which uh, will contain everything um, that you need to become a data engineer uh, I'm right now uh, writing this and the preview has the the whole description of a data science platform and the complete um, table of contents and so on so check this out and if you if you like to have the full version and support me um, support me on patreon all right that's it see you tomorrow in part two bye bye